This is Ray Stokes in the oral history section of the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine Library. I'm in my office this afternoon on the 5th of November 1985 with the first female graduate of TCOM, having graduated in the first class in 1974, Dr. Nelda Kniff. Dr. Nelda Kniff is a general practitioner down in Burleson, some few miles south of Fort Worth. Dr. Nelda, we're delighted that you took off from a busy schedule to come and, and let me kind of pick your brain, so to speak, and let you give us some of your memoirs of uh, what you felt about uh, as a student doctor and uh, some of the trials and tribulations that you had at that time and how you now have been in practice for some 10 years. Kind of share with us some of, the, some of your uh, past uh, experiences. For example, uh, you were a, a registered nurse. Yes, I was. Uh, and uh, you graduated where? Uh, uh, from John Peter Smith School of Nursing in 1963, uh, from Texas Wesleyan College 1968 with uh, a BS in nursing. BS in nursing, 1968. And then in, 19, in 1970, you became one of the first uh, students uh, at, at uh, TCOM uh, in its first class. Uh, since you did have a career in nursing, you had a family, I believe you have three children. Yes. Two boys and a girl. And of course, they're all grown now, and they were more than just uh, babies when you came here uh, as a student. Well, I had one starting junior high, one starting high school, and one starting college the year I started medical school. One so. starting Was that your daughter that started college? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, what uh, motivated uh, you to become a medical student? Uh, I had the fortune of uh, being uh, in a hands-on and bedside position uh, as a surgical recovery nurse, but I have a tendency about every three or four years to kind of get bored with what I'm doing and want to do something uh, a little different, more challenging. And to go up in nursing at that point in time would have meant going into an office and administration, and I liked the patients, and I, I really was... Uh, more interested in, in maintaining patient contact, but I still wanted to go into uh, a different position and um, um, decided to consider medical school and completed requirements. Uh, and just uh, soon after I had almost finished the requirements, uh, I, got, I heard a rumor that TCOM might open how did you hear that? Do you recall? Uh, yes, I, I, did, I heard that from a lab technician uh, who was moonlighting at Boulevard Hospital where I was working as a nurse. Now, Boulevard Hospital is close across by the street, here, uh -huh. And uh, he worked uh, Fort Worth O full time and, and at Boulevard uh, part time. And uh, he, he told me that, uh, that there was a rumor the school would open, and I made some contacts and was told. I think maybe by your office that yes, the school might open. <laughs> <laughs> might open. And I completed the admission requirements and was interviewed. And uh, uh, some reluctance on Dr. Noble's part to okay me until he talked to my husband. But uh, now, Dr. Noble's who he, is he? Uh, Dr. Noble's from Denton, and he was on the admissions committee. Admissions committee. Mm -hmm. And but we got that all uh, cleared away, and uh, I was accepted for admission. Dr. Nella, do you feel that uh, you received a complete medical education at TCOM since you were in the first class and naturally you didn't have all the sophistication that we have here today and all of the brick and mortar, so to speak, but share some of your feelings. No, I doubt that medical education is ever complete. I feel like I got a good basic medical education uh, I feel that I've had uh, very little problem dealing with uh, with family practice. I, I had really good support uh, f from the uh, older, uh, more experienced physicians. The first two years I was in practice, uh, they were more than willing to give me telephone consults and hallway consults on my patients, and I never saw any reluctance on anyone's part to, to help me out in that sense. Uh, probably the only area that I felt a little deficient in and it didn't stop me was obstetrics 
uh, at that point in time there were just was not enough experience in the hospitals where I trained to, to really make me feel comfortable with obstetrics, but I, I liked it well enough that I uh, stayed with it and it took me about two years to really feel very comfortable with it and sometimes I'm still not comfortable with it, but I, after 10 years I'm still doing obstetrics. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is your philosophy? You know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, sort of a new direction that the TCOM is taking uh, uh, in various goals and pursuits of medical education. What is your philosophy concerning uh, TCOM's current emphasis upon health and preventive medicine? Well, I think a sign of maturity in an adult is that they are aware of how they should take care of themselves and uh, I think they should be interested without focusing on their body functions. I think they should be interested in how they can care take care of themselves. I think our children should be better educated for uh, health reasons and uh, it, I'm, I'm shocked sometimes when I know, find out how little kids are learning just in their grade school classes about health. So I'm very much in favor of uh, the uh, preventive aspect of health care and I think that uh, uh, with many people uh, there's a renewed interest in that sort of thing now and they are, are uh, more than interested in, in learning how to care for themselves and, and with the uh, current uh, uh, economic uh, uh, crisis with uh, health care expense, uh, anything they can do to safely uh, cut down their medical expenses, I think they're, they're willing to, to do. Um, I, th I think that's, that's the way medicine should be. I think it may take a little more time to explain to the patient what's going on, what they could have done to prevent that, or what they might do to prevent it in the future. But I think that's what they're looking for, uh, as, as well as someone just taking the time to consider them as, as a human being. Uh, I'm very much in favor of the preventive uh, aspect. Mm -hmm. well, good. You know, as uh, you were in this day of uh, emphasis upon uh, minorities, uh, you certainly were a minority in your first class, some 19 men and one woman. Uh, you must have had some rather heavy experiences and some lighter moments as well. Can you think of uh, anything particular uh, uh, during your uh, years as a, a student here at TCOM, uh, that's outstanding, rather memorable, whether it be of the lighter or the rather serious uh, aspect uh, in your education. Oh, I think there were there were so many light moments. Um, I really had very few negative experiences. Uh, I think that the whole thing was. Uh, uh, reasonably, I, w I would say 90% pleasant for me. Uh, I don't feel that I had any problems related to me being female. Uh, I did not invite those problems, but uh, I don't feel that uh, I didn't I didn't ask for any special privileges, uh, but I don't feel that anyone was harder on me because I was female. Um, and of course being the only female in, in a class was uh, uh, interesting, <laughs> uh -huh. very interesting, and uh, it was it was enjoyable. I became one of the boys, and uh, it was, uh, we were a uh, reasonably close class uh, right, right. in most respects. Well, uh, what uh, would you most uh, like to be best remembered for? In your uh, with your association with TCOM, um, didn't you win some particular oh, well, awards? I, I won. Uh, I won an Upjohn, uh, uh, the Upjohn Award in my class. For, would you explain a little about that? Well, at that point in time, it was for community service, and I'm not sure that that's still what it is. But um, based on I think my clinic rotations and uh, uh, involvement with some of the community things that. Uh, I received that award. I would like best to be remembered uh, as someone who made efforts to uh, give the osteopathic profession a, a good name 
and as someone who's loyal to this school, I think this school is well worth being loyal to. Uh, and uh, I'd like to be remembered as uh, caring about people. Caring about people. Well, that probably means that uh, uh, in caring about people, can you just give me a, a describe, uh, or maybe there is no such thing as a typical day as a general practitioner, but what's a typical day like in Burleson? Now, give us a little bit of background about Burleson, Texas, and some of its uh, town folks. A typical day in practice in Burleson uh, involves many, many phone calls. Uh, some of them uh, are rerouted to my nurse, some of them I take. Uh, I'm just uh, not able to handle all the phone calls, but uh, uh, she's, she's very good. She's been with me for a long time, so I, I trust her to, to take care of some of the things that uh, I don't necessarily have to deal with. Uh, I'm kind of a late starter, so usually it's about 9.15 when I get to the office, and I'm already one patient behind then, mm -hmm. and uh, things don't get better as the day goes on as far as scheduling is concerned. But I, uh, for the most part, have developed close rapport with most of my patients. Uh, most of them have been with me for a long time, but I, I still see, oh, probably 15 new patients a week, mm -hmm. and uh, I have uh, How many do you see of, uh, as a rule or average on a day? I average 20 to 25 patients a day. I do a lot of manipulation and it takes a lot of time. And, and I'm glad to hear you say that. So that um, I'm not able to see 40 patients a day now. Between my nursing home, hospital, office, and, the, and then the people that just come in for shots, there may be 35 patients a day total. Mm -hmm. But the ones that I personally see by appointment at the office are, are 20 to 25. Um, I try to take a, a, a break at, at lunchtime, but I don't always get out for that. I, but I, that's usually when I make rounds at the hospitals. Which uh, hospitals do you serve? I use uh, about 80% of my patients go to Higley Hospital on the South Freeway and then about 20% to Fort Worth O, mostly because there's 20 miles from Burleson into Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, I do see quite a few people from Fort Worth, however, so that uh, most of the time I'm making rounds at Hughley, but sometimes I'll have patients at Fort Worth Hall for well, as long as five or six weeks at a time, so it, it sort of comes in spurts. But uh, um, lots of counseling, uh, lots of um, a good variety of disease. I have uh, had no problem with being bored with the type of patients I'm seeing because I, uh, I, I've had some tremendously interesting cases. Um, well, can you think of any particular case that you could share without uh, violating any confidence or anything? Oh, not, um, not anything just off the top of my head specific. How about uh, today? Anything particular today that occurred that uh, little unusual or exceptional? Um, no, today was a fairly um, routine obstetric patient, so uh, a newborn, uh, a chronic uh, shoulder problem uh, that we don't have a definitive diagnosis on yet. I don't know if we'll ever. He's been to oh, at least four consultants and we still don't have a diagnosis. So, mm. uh, but this was my, my short day. I, I, I leave at noon or between 12 and 1 on Tuesdays because I have a fiddling lesson. <laughs> that I have to you do. have what lesson? A fiddling lesson. Do you so play I, the violin? I'm learning. You, you know, are. Yeah, Texas style fiddling and uh, right. bluegrass and breakdowns. Um, well, now that's an interesting facet in your life. I didn't know about oh, yeah, that's I've been doing that for about two years now. Uh -huh. Really am enjoying it. Um, but ordinarily, I'm, I'm in, at the office till 5 or 5.30. Um, I used to be there till 7, but I've, uh, I guess I've gotten a little more efficient because I'm not working as many hours as I used to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, my obstetrics patients seems like uh, they're cooperating a lot. So for one week out of the month, I'll have a lot of deliveries. And the rest of the month, I don't have to get out at night very much. Um, 
nursing home patients I just sort of work in. Now you mentioned and nursing home. Uh, go in a little more in detail uh, uh, about your nursing home activities. Okay, I have probably 90 to 100 nursing home patients in two nursing homes in Burleson. And they're both located in uh -huh. Burleson? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I had no intention initially of doing nursing home work, but uh, oh, it, it um, just sort of worked out convenient that a, a DO who had been in practice in Burleson was leaving and uh, asked would I take his nursing home patients and I did it as a community service basically and there were 25 of them about. Um, it worked into a very good practice builder. Uh, I made some very, uh, lasting friendships. Uh, it's been a tremendous experience. Uh, uh, always like to expose medical students to nursing home because um, if a if a patient nursing home patient knows anyone they know their physician and they're always just glad to see you and if you just recognize them whether it's a person touch them a little bit they respond just wonderfully and they can make your day uh, once in a while they can take away from your day <laughs> but <laughs> some some of the right. families are a little bit difficult to deal with but most of them that. Uh, in that part of the country anyway, are just uh, glad to have someone that will pay some individual attention to their to their parents and, and uh, it, it's overall been a very positive experience and uh, I feel like I don't give it the time that it really deserves but um, and it doesn't pay all that well uh, money wise but um, it, it's, it's a good aspect of my practice and um, probably comprises uh, maybe um, six to eight percent of my time uh, and uh, so if I'm efficient when I make rounds at the nursing home I come out okay um, and have to deal with the government but that's okay too. So. You make uh, 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 one particular nursing home uh, do you make one round a week or more? Well, or? No, some of the patients uh, are, uh, are to be seen every 30 days, some every 60 days, mm -hmm. and uh, but I try you know, to get some of it done every week. Do you have to and handle uh, emergencies there too? Uh-huh, yes I do. Yeah. So, um, How large a uh, community was Burleson when you moved there, and then about how much growth have you had down there since you've been there? You've been in, you're one of the exceptions, you know. Most most doctors uh, move around about three times the first five years, and you've been in the same place for ten. Right. Uh, Burleson was probably around eleven thousand on the population sign at, at the city limits when I went there, and it, it says something like thirteen thousand seven fifty now, but the drawing area around close is probably more like twenty five thousand, and it's, it's rapidly growing, but not within the city limits. Is it growing quite a bit between Burleson and Cleburne? It's growing in all directions. Mm -hmm. Burleson to Alvarado may be the heaviest, but uh, it, it's growing in all directions. Yeah, really. right. Well, Dr. Nelda, I sure do appreciate having the opportunity to visit with you and to get some of your thoughts of uh, the past and the present. Do you have any projection about the future? For for me, for well, the school? Well, <laughs> well, for you and your profession, your yeah. activities. Uh, well, I think osteopathy is going to be the uh, the uh, medical school of the future and I think we have what people are looking for and I'm glad I'm participating in that now. I believe that no matter uh, how bad the economics get that uh, if you take care of people uh, they'll find a way to get to you so you can take care of them and uh, I think uh, if you make medicine, the, the social part of medicine, um, part of your, the pleasure in your life, uh, uh, that um, it's, um, it's not all like work. And uh, some days I wish I didn't have to go to work, but if I have to uh, make a living, then I'm doing what I like to be doing. So. Well, Dr. Nelda Kniff, we do appreciate very much you coming by and visiting with us today. Thank you for asking me.